The 2015 Royal Rumble match was the worst Rumble match in history. Now we have all seen our fair share of bad Royal Rumble matches over the years. For example, 1988, although revolutionary, was incredibly boring. 1996 was filled with ridiculous gimmicks and had no real star power. And 1999 had some outrageous antics and was topped off as Vince McMahon claimed the victory for himself. But in recent memory, there are none that stand out as plain awful as much as the 2015 Rumble. Really? What were they thinking with the booking of this match? Now if you allow me to set the scene for a minute. The year before at the 2014 Rumble, fans were clamouring for either CM Punk or Daniel Bryan to win it. The WWE Universe were on the edge of their seat, expecting Daniel Bryan to walk out at number 30 after delivering an outstanding match with Bray Wyatt earlier in the night. Instead of Daniel Bryan, Rey Mysterio walked out, he entered to a chorus of boos and his elimination via Seth Rollins received an enormous cheer. And the Rumble wasn't just a nightmare for Rey, but also CM Punk. That match was Punk's last match in the WWE. He entered at number one and fought all the way till the end, only to be unfairly eliminated by Kane. After the match, Punk actually walked out of the company. Roman Reigns, on the other hand, somewhat still considered as a young rookie at the time, had a breakout performance, as he broke Kane's 13-year record to register the most Royal Rumble eliminations with 12. But in the final moments of the match, Batista eliminated Reigns to win his second Rumble match with the fans far from happy with the outcome. So you would think one year on, WWE would try to make it up to the fans and book a Rumble where fans could actually leave happy right. Yeah, so if you know anything about WWE, that's not how they operate. Instead, what we ended up getting was much much worse. The 28th Royal Rumble came at a time when WWE was trying to elevate new stars into the main event picture. When the Shield trio of Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose split up in June 2014 after Rollins turned on his brothers to align with Triple H, that meant all three men were on a similar path to the top of WWE. Rollins won the Money in the Bank contract that summer while feuding with Ambrose a lot and Reigns was clearly the guy that WWE wanted to push to the main event picture. The fans, although cheering him the year before, had now grown cold on the superstar. From late 2014 to early 2015, various critics raised concerns that Reigns, despite not being fully ready, was being pushed too hard, too soon. While WWE tried to make him their next flagship star, no matter how fans reacted. In an interview with Crave Online prior to the 2015 Rumble, Roman reacted to the negative reception from fans by saying that he only entertained criticism of his wrestling by people that were involved with wrestling, discounting negative opinions by critics that weren't wrestlers and who wouldn't understand how to lock up. This of course added more fuel to the fire. Fans didn't want to see it. They were more enamored with Brian, CM Punk and even Rollins. Guys who were terrific in-ring performers and had earned the respect of the audience through years of working on the independents. Nevertheless, the Sammy winner for Superstar of the Year in 2014 had his eyes set on being the last man standing in the 2015 Royal Rumble. Before we go on, I do want to caveat that although the American audience were rejecting Reigns, this created this illusion that he was hated by everyone, but that's simply not true. Roman Reigns was very popular around the world and his merchandise sales proved that he was a star, which is why WWE decided to run with him. However, on the American side of the pond, he was definitely polarizing with a lot more detractors than supporters. Going into the Rumble, WWE had Daniel Bryan make his triumphant return after being forced to forfeit the World Heavyweight title due to injury. So naturally, he was the fan favorite. As well as Bryan, there were a number of other popular superstars going in, such as Bray Wyatt, Dolph Ziggler, and Dean Ambrose, who had they won, the audience probably would have left somewhat pleased with the outcome. Also, it's worth noting that the Rumble was taking place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania home of ECW, and it's widely regarded as being one of the most vocal crowds and one of the quickest to voice their displeasure for what they don't like. You can always count on a Philly crowd to be a major talking point after an event. Going into the show, we also knew that The Rock was going to be there. He gave it away on social media, and what he would end up doing would become clearer in the Rumble match. Now on to the match itself. It started out with The Miz and R-Truth, which was a nod to their former partnership back in 2011. The number three entrant was Bubba Ray Dudley, who returned for the first time in 10 years. It was amazing and the fans popped huge for him. The Philly crowd cheered the hell out of him and he did some of his signature spots and loud ECW chants would erupt from the arena. He got True to do the <laughs> on Miz and he even told True to <laughs> It was a terrific start for the match but it would soon take a turn for the worse. Luke Harper, Bray Wyatt and Eric Rowan would enter shortly after, where we saw a brief Wyatt family reunion until Bray Wyatt took control and eliminated both of them. 
as well as each and every other wrestler coming out one by one, including a returning boogeyman. To be fair to them, they built it up quite nicely, up until the number 10 entrant Daniel Bryan showed up, who received a thunderous ovation. It was clear to see who the overwhelming fan favourite was at this point. More and more entrants came out and the Rumble was actually going pretty well. We even got a returning DDP, who received a fantastic reaction from the crowd. It was all going well until the fateful moment that Wyatt eliminated Bryan after just over 10 minutes of him being in the match. The fans wanted Daniel Bryan to be their main eventer, but WWE were not listening. They had given the fans their Bryan moment at WrestleMania 30 and they had no intention of giving them another one. To add further insult, after Bryan was eliminated, WWE decided the next entrant would be Goldust with his signature Shattered Dreams icon on the Tron. If the fans weren't already riled up, that would surely get them. Classic rib from WWE there. But whoever it was that decided to make this booking decision made a pretty bad call as it would lead to this rumble being considered as one of the worst in history. Not just because Brian didn't win, I'm okay with that, but with how early he was eliminated, surely they could have at least kept him in the final four, at least to give the fans some hope and keep them hot throughout. Surely they would know that the crowd would just completely shit on the rest of the match, which they indeed proceeded to do. We would hear boos throughout crowd here is still reeling over the fact that their favorite Daniel Bryan got eliminated. Things got even worse when Roman Reigns came out as entry number 19 and he was greeted with one of the worst receptions of any Royal Rumble entrant ever. The boos just wouldn't stop as each entrant came out. There was a small respite in the crowd as the popular Damian Mizdow came into the ring, but that didn't last long as he was eliminated by Rusev in just 18 seconds. Then after Ryback came out at number 23, chance of rang through the arena, probably a tip to CM Punk's tell-all interview with Colt Cabana in late 2014 where he heavily criticised Ryback for his in-ring work. There seemed to be no light at the end of the tunnel until Dean Ambrose entered at number 25. At least fans had someone in there that they could actually cheer for now. In terms of Reigns, WWE's attempts at getting him over through this match was terrible. In the 2014 match, they were able to make Reigns look like a badass by having him tear through most of the roster. Here? He gets a couple of eliminations, then lays down for the rest of it. They even had him and Ambrose try to break the record for the quickest elimination ever against Titus O'Neil, but they couldn't even get that right. There then wasn't much for the crowd to get overly excited about until the final entrant, Dolph Ziggler, entered the fray. Now this is where things got really bad. Instead of pushing the young talent to the top, WWE had Kane and The Big Show dominate the entire rest of the match and eliminate the crowd favourites such as Dolph Ziggler and Bray Wyatt. The final four consisted of Big Show, Kane, Reigns and Ambrose, and once Ambrose was eliminated, the crowd well and truly checked out. I suppose the idea was to have Big Show and Kane snuff out all the popular acts to leave only Reigns as the only choice left. Surely everyone will have to love him then. Only that doesn't work at all because he'd done absolutely nothing to endear us to him in the match. And if you think the fans were pissed when Brian gets eliminated, wait until you hear their reaction to Roman Reigns battling Big Show and Kane at the end. The crowd proceeded to chant, WWE fans, of course not happy. Eventually, Roman ended up eliminating both men, but he didn't even look cool taking them out. They take an exact spot from nine years earlier, also with Kane in the big show, and replace Triple H with Roman, making him look sneaky instead of powerful. As Big Show and Kane attack Reigns after elimination, the crowd begin to chant as he hadn't actually been eliminated and was laying on the floor outside the ring. Meanwhile, The Rock returned and came down the ramp to save Reigns from the ongoing onslaught from Big Show and Kane. But even that wasn't enough to change the fan reaction. The crowd legit booed Dwayne The Rock Johnson because he helped Reigns win the match. They would go on to cheer on the final threat Rusev for the very same reason they cheered on Reigns over Batista a year earlier. Reigns ultimately won the 2015 Royal Rumble to one of the worst receptions in living memory. Even The Rock raising Reigns' hand did nothing for the former Shield man. WWE were forcing the big dog on the fans and they did not appreciate it. However, WWE didn't care for the reactions. They established Reigns as a top guy and a babyface to boot, whether anyone liked it or not. Honestly, the fact that Roman Reigns won the Rumble wasn't the absolute worst part of the match. Although, it was certainly a terrible decision and extremely poorly booked. The biggest issue was that most of the fan favourites were thoroughly dominated by the ageing and largely unwanted duo of Kane and The Big Show. 
As a result, the match was insanely dull and plodding, with most of the talented wrestlers being squashed. There were multiple opportunities for WWE to change plans and actually save this match, but for whatever reason, they chose not to, and the result was one of the worst Rumble matches ever. Shortly after the event, hashtag cancel WWE Network became the top Twitter trend worldwide. While PWInsider.com reported that the WWE Network online cancellation page had crashed, and that some subscribers who would call WWE to cancel their subscription were told to call back the next day as there were too many people attempting to manually cancel their subscription. Later in the month, WWE Chairman Vince McMahon responded to hashtag cancel WWE Network in a conference call, saying that the controversy was good for WWE. McMahon labelled it as a vocal minority upset that the babyface did not win and Santa Claus didn't come on that pay-per-view, but he expected those who complained to continue watching WWE anyway. Roman Reigns responded to the backlash by fans saying, I don't think I'm headbutting with hardcore fans. I feel like they're headbutting me. One thing that kind of confuses me is that it's a performance, it's a show, there is a storyline. When people start doing the, he deserves this, he deserves that, Really? Did Brad Pitt deserve to be Achilles in Troy? This eventually led to both Lesnar and Reigns being booed by the fans at the WrestleMania that followed, only for Seth Rollins to save the main event and cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase to the joy of all fans watching. So all in all, it ended up leading to a pretty solid WrestleMania. But if we're talking about the match by itself, it surely has to go down as one of the worst Royal Rumble matches in history. Did you enjoy the 2015 Rumble? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It would go along way to let me know if you would want to see more videos like this. Have a great day and I'll see you next time.